Hello everyone, and now number seven of these many lectures. Um, now we get to the meat um, of these lectures talking about what is in the book and what we're really studying here, actual artwork. So um, we're going to get started here with the art of the ancients, um, as I call it here, um, prehistoric art. Now, as we go through this, um, to help develop what's in the book a little bit more, but thinking about it a little bit differently and, and boiling it down, what I want to do with these lectures is highlight the things that I think are the most important. Now, this might be important on the tests, the exams. It will be important on your assignments. But really, overall, it's to help you understand more about the cultures, more about the peoples, and about the artists who created these artworks, um, understanding their world a little bit better. So what I have are slides, what I call hallmarks, and then the time period or the art period that this covers. So the hallmarks of prehistoric are going to be for us to know anything about them, the material that's used needs to be um, able to not deteriorate. It needs to be stone. It needs to be um, paint inside of caves that's protected. Um, antler material, ivory, okay, um, stone. And what we see here is most of the artwork that we see is stone sculpture. Okay, because there probably were other forms of artwork, leather, um, on the ground, many forms of artworks, but they're just gone because of weather, because of um, age, whatever circumstance, we just don't have it. So um, what we see here on this slide uh, one of the more important things is nearly all the figurines that we have from prehistoric times are female. And that could lead into some interesting discussions about why that is. Okay. Um, some of the other things um, that we see here are simplified forms that we don't want to fall into the trap thinking that early man was stupid um, or the popular belief that Neanderthals just didn't, um, they just weren't smart. Um, coming from a Christian point of view, which I do come from and what Sterling comes from, that Adam and Eve were created perfect. They were smart. They knew things. They understood their environment. Um, but then when sin entered in, yes, things were dumbed down. Um, they probably weren't as smart and they probably weren't able to work with technology as well. And just over history, it's that building up of technology to get where we are today. But we are nearly identical to them. Um, the thought processes, the ability to think, to create art is there. Um, and when we look at even the most ancient pieces of artwork, there's a lot of intelligence there. Okay, um, so I'm just going to hit some of the highlights of this first chapter. Um, one of the first pieces that we have here, um, and, and let me point out something, this diamond that I have here that means that this is on the list, what I call the um, image vault, um, that this image potentially will be on the uh, midterm exam. Okay, we will have a midterm exam, and as you read the description um, in the syllabus, that it will be slide oriented, that there will be slides and questions to go along with um, each one of those slides and 
um, to help you study because hopefully um, the, well, the test, the exams will not uh, feature every image in the book or every image that I have in my miniature lectures, okay? Um, and also about the lectures, I probably will be showing images that are not in the book. And I do that because I want you to see these images not just as flat pieces with text around them. I want you to see them either in the museum or other pieces that that artist has created um, to give you a more rounded view. Um, maybe a lot of it will not quote unquote be on the test, um, but you can write about it in a more succinct way. Um, you'll be more well-rounded in your descriptions, in your uh, critical analysis uh, papers, or in your uh, group study with the wikis. Um, so just to do a wide variety that isn't just what's in the book, okay? Um, so this piece, the Venus of Willendorf, um, a female figurine, um, and I'm not going to go in depth on it. The book does a pretty good job. Um, the thing here is we don't know what it's for. It might be a fertility trinket. Um, it might be a good luck charm. Um, obviously, it's a, a large female. Um, very large. Um, there are tribes even today that they pour goat's milk down their young girls' um, throats to get them fat because they think that will make them more fertile, and there is some evidence of that, okay? So as we look at this, we need to think, what was this created for? And really, we don't know. It could go anywhere from a fertility cult piece to a doll. Um, probably not, but there are some people that think that. Okay. Now here are some pieces from um, a prehistoric cave. This is in France, and um, this is not in the book, but it's very similar to Lascaux, although this has hundreds and hundreds of images that were produced over several hundred years, um, charcoal drawings of the animals of that place. And as we look at this, this is in France, and what do we see? There are lions. There were giant oxen. Um, there were rhinoc rhinoceroses. Rhinoceri. There were horses that have a very, very stubby mane. Um, really, the horses, a precursor of the horses we see um, now in Mongolia. Um, and this is actually a different cave, but we see that cave people in many places, they love to sign their work or just enjoy, for whatever reason, blowing paint or patting paint around their hands. Some people see this as a signature. Um, we don't really know, again, what this is. And then we go to the Lascaux Caves, also in France, and we see some of these images that are very similar um, with the horses and the oxen-looking uh, animals um, in online in the materials that came with your book you should be able to find some listings and they actually have a uh, recreation online of the Lasco cave. Um, th that was the first one I've ever seen of that, that done that well, where we can actually, it seems like we're there. Um, and it really can um, give you a better sense of what these are like. Here's another one, the horse from Lasco. Um, showed this talking about the elements, but a really wonderful um, recreation of a horse. The head might be a little bit small, but maybe they're trying to accentuate how small the head is. 
and how plump this body is. Okay. And now Stonehenge is another highlight of prehistoric. Um, all kinds of theories about this. What I want you to understand about this is the massive size and the architecture. Um, as it says back here, um, the height, 13 and a half feet high that we can see, and then there's probably at least another 13, 15, maybe 20 feet below the ground to make them remain upright. These are very, very large, heavy, and they came from miles and miles away. Why they're there, we still don't know. There's all kinds of conjecture how it was built, all kinds of conjecture. Um, anywhere from aliens to um, people from the future, just wacky uh, things there. Its purpose, probably this is a calendar, uh, but we really don't know that even for sure. Um, but one thing that I do want you to get out of this is the architecture. That this is a um, lintel and post architecture, that the weight of the top stone is being held up by these verticals. And this is really the most ancient of architecture. Um, this is the architecture that most of human history has used. And even in our houses today, we use this technology. The problem with this technology is you can't go very high with it um, before whatever you're building wants to topple over. And really it was not until the um, Romans um, and concrete that other uh, great buildings were able to be created that were massive, okay? And in relationship with Stonehenge, I always love a good laugh. I found this slide of Carhenge in Nebraska where a farmer has out in his field these cars painted gray, and this is actually a tourist attraction now. And people go there, take their pic take their uh, pictures with these cars, because um, they may never be able to go to England, and this is the best we have. But it really is a tongue-in-cheek piece of artwork. And as part of um, what I show here, um, this is the Sumerian and Babylonian, basically the Mesopotamian, um, societies um, in the Fertile Crescent. Um, you can see this picture, modern-day Iraq, modern-day Iran, modern-day Israel, Egypt over here, um, Greece. And we're talking about this part right in here at the moment with Babylon and Uruk and Ur and Nineveh. Um, I'm going to scoot on down. I'm going to pass over quite a few, but I want you to see this image. I don't believe this is in the book. Um, this is a Lamassu, where it represents the human intelligence, the strength of the bull, the speed of birds, because it's winged. And um, this was at um, one of the great uh, fortresses. in what is now um, Iraq. Um, interesting enough, at this moment in time, um, ISIS, the Islamic State, has destroyed several of these. This one is actually at the Louvre in Paris, um, but in, in they've destroyed things, I'll put it that way. And they actually destroyed one of these great pieces of artwork just recently. Um, and then next, I'm going to finish up by doing a small one, small little lecture on Egypt.